Hi everyone, this is Maths World UK. I'm James Grime and today I'm speaking with Aoife Hunt. Aoife is a mathematician who's going to tell us a little bit about the maths of social distancing, which is going to be very important this year. And this is what Aoife does. So she uses maths to study crowd movements. So Aoife's going to tell us a little bit about her day job and then tell us a little bit about the sort of maths that is used in social distancing. But I started our conversation by asking Aoife what is her favourite kind of maths? Oh, well at school I loved a little bit of a bit of geometry I reckon. I love a good triangle and I love a good shape. <laughs> um, and then when I went to university I um, learned more about how to apply maths um, in, in real world environments and really liked looking at using maths to understand how people move around. Of course that's what you do. So you actually use maths in your job. So we should talk about what your job is a little bit. Uh, so could you tell us a little bit about what you do? Um, I work in people movement planning, which means I work in big crowded environments like Wembley Stadium, for example. And uh, we understand the maths of how people move around and how crowds move and all those dynamics. Um, and we can try to predict what people might do and help to um, help to plan for big crowds. You've been actually studying uh, crowd movement in lockdown situations, is that right? That's exactly right. So it, it's all sort of turned on its head. Um, it used to be about looking at how big crowds all behave together and all, you know, hundreds of thousands of people all moving um, at the same time, uh, down to how can we actually keep people spaced apart? So it's no longer these big, dense environments. It's about social distancing and about how you can keep people uh, safe, you know, sa safely spaced apart to reduce the risk of virus transmission. So uh, I'm going to pass it over to you. Let's, let's have a look at uh, what you brought in to show us today. What I've uh, brought to show you today is some of the work that we've been doing looking at the maths of social distancing. So I've chosen just a few of my favourite bits here to show you. So social distancing, as we all know, I'm sure, is this idea that we should try and keep apart from uh, people as we're moving around. And so across the world, there's lots of different uh, measurements for this. But here in the UK, it's uh, two metres is the recommended gap between people. Now, this sounds quite straightforward, but actually, if you try and measure this and if you try and, for example, measure it out on a floor, um, it's actually not quite as simple as it looks. So here we have three yellow lines and they're all measured a metre apart. And the whole idea is that if people are standing on the red dots here between lines A and C, then they're going to be two metres apart. But let's have a look at what actually happens when they're used. So if you see that we've got our three lines here um, as shown, the lines might be two metres apart, but when you put people on those red spots, the space between the two people is actually less than two metres. So measuring this out actually has to look at body size. So instead of measuring from the top of someone's head to the top of someone's head, which if, if that was two metres, then the space between them wouldn't be two metres. We actually have to look at um, the space between. So uh, the real question here is, well, okay, how wide is a person then? If we need to know what, how to, to space people out, we need to know um, how much space a person occupies. Um, and this is where we uh, collect data and measure lots of people and, uh, you know, try and, try and do some, some research. Um, and generally, um, it's accepted that the space that a person needs is about um, 600 millimetres, so 60 centimetres by 400 millimetres. And that's an ellipse. Now, that's not the size of an actual person. It's the space they occupy as they're sort of swaying, moving, standing, you know, moving from foot to foot. Um, and so that's the shape that we would normally use. But actually, if you think a person might be able to turn the whole way around, then a circle might be a better shape to use. So we're much more complicated beings than you might imagine in terms of shape. And if you think about walking, um, your shape actually changes as you walk. So as you go through your step cycle, you're getting bigger and smaller um, as, as, as that happens. But we have these, these sort of baseline measurements and we can start to look at what that means for social distancing. Now, these are averages. So if you measure yourself and your friends and family, you should all fit comfortably within, uh, with, within some of these. But of course, it doesn't replicate absolutely everyone. Um, so let's have a look at the space required for social distancing around a person. So we think of it as a bubble. So you need, you've got your space that you need, which we've said is um, 600 millimetres, so 
uh, 0.6 meters. And then we want to keep a bubble around us of, of our own space. So if we put a meter either size of us in a bubble, that means the diameter of our bubble is uh, 2.6 meters. What that means is if we then are near to other people and we're sort of packed in next to other people, if everyone has the same shape bubble, then no one will be more than uh, two meters uh, to the next person. So you're sort of achieving that social distance uh, criteria. Um, so the first question we need to really think about is, well, how much area do we then need um, per person? So question here, how much area of space would every person need to have? For this bubble to work and I'm going to uh, leave you now to pause it if you want to um, and then press play again if you want to work this out yourself and for those of you who stayed with us um, the area as we know of a circle is going to be pi r squared and r is the radius which is half of the diameter so that means it's pi uh, times 1.3 times 1.3 um, which is 5.31 meters squared now that's a lot of, of square meterage per person. If you look around you and think about how, how much space that, that actually means. Um, and the reason that we look at the area required per person is we need to understand how many people we can fit in areas now that social distancing is, is, is around. So let's have a think about um, how many of these bubbles, for example, you might be able to fit in hundred square meters. So it could be, um, an area that's 10 by 10 in a square like this, which means there's 100 square meters in there. And I'll remind you that we've just worked out that the area of each bubble would be 5.31 meters squared. Um, I'll leave you to have a quick think. Um, how many uh, people you, you think might be able to fit into this square? Now, many of you might have decided to say, well, the number of bubbles that I can fit in 100 square meters is, 100 square meters, which is the area, divided by 5.31, because that would be the number that you can fit in. And if you did that, it would come out as 18.8 um, bubbles that you fit in. And now we need to look really whether or not this could be done in reality. So let's try it. And if you want to, you can take a piece of paper and draw, draw this out and draw your, um, your circles to, to scale and see how many you can fit in. When I tried to do this, this is what I got. So it's not quite 18. In fact, it's not quite 16 really, is it? So what's happened here? We've taken the area of the, of the circle and we've tried to, to, to divide that into the, um, the space we have available. But actually we can see that it matters how we stack the circles around each other. And what we're missing, that gap between the 18 and nearly 16 here is all this black space here in between. And that's the space that you can't occupy with another person. So the interesting thing about putting circles together in a, in a space like this is how you arrange them really matters. So the number of bubbles are less than 16. And that's because the way I've chosen to lay them out is in a grid. So I've chosen to lay them out exactly on top and, and to the side of each other, which means that I'm not taking the circular area, I'm actually taking a square area. I'm taking for each person, I'm giving them a square basically of 2.6 by 2.6, which means really um, I'm giving them 6.76 meters squared, too much per, per person. And that means we can do the same calculation to figure out the number of bubbles that are in there. And it leads to 14.8, which looks about right, right? Given what we can see in terms of the number of bubbles. So can we fit more people in? Well. You know, you can move your frame around <laughs> to try and see uh, if the way that it's um, uh, orientated will enable people to, more people to get in. And you can do that by removing some of those spaces. But you can also look at other mathematical shapes that might better stack people in an area. Um, now, I won't do the calculations for this one, um, but do check it out yourself. If you do this using hexagons, for example, you're actually able to get more people. We call it the beehive when you put lots of hexagons all stuck together. You're able to get more people into a uh, 100 meter square than you would have done uh, with the simple grid. Um, and this is an area of math that's normally called circle packing. So have a look online for, for, for more information on this. And um, there's a whole world out of um, circle packing mathematics, including how to get circles into square areas as we've just had a look at, 
but also into other circles. Um, and there's some really cool um, patterns that you can create by trying to pack circles in different, in different ways. I've also brought with me um, another quick uh, bit of math to do with social distancing that's actually come about as we've been looking at getting stadiums and concert venues um, back open with people inside. So uh, looking at how people can be spaced apart when they're seated, we have to take a different type of measurement. So what you can see here is um, seat measurements. So these seats are 55 centimetres by 80 centimetres. So it means there's 80 centimetres between the back of one seat and the back of another. And we frequently have to work out the distance between two people. Now in this example, let's try and work out um, the distance between people's heads. So often times when looking at people seated outside, um, people want to know whether or not the heads of people are sufficiently distanced from each other, as you can imagine. Um, so the question is, between these two people here on the right, what is the distance between their two heads? Now, we can measure this, of course, we could just take a ruler and look at it. But given the information that we have about the seating dimensions, you'll see that it's actually we're able to make this into a triangle. So we take that 80 centimetre and that 55 centimetre uh, dimensions. We know that the same, that's the distance from the same point um, of, of two different people. Um, and the distance between them will form that lovely triangle, which means we can do uh, my favourite, Pythagoras, um, looking at a right angle triangle with lengths A, B and C, which of course the equation is here. If you want to do it yourself, you can pause now. And otherwise, uh, we can see that, of course, it's going to be A being 55 and B being 80. Um, we square them both, so we get 3,025 plus 6,400. And we know that equals c squared. Um, and then we can um, square root that to get c, and then c is going to be uh, 97. So what that means is that these two people here are only 97 meters, uh, centimeters apart. Um, and you can tell that actually by their bubbles overlapping as we discussed earlier in the, in the last bit. Um, so what this means is that actually these people are not going to be able to sit in those seats. And so when we sell our tickets, we're going to have to look for another um, alternative and we can just do the calculation all over again for the next seat along. And we can see that, yes, that's 137 centimetres and that's a tick box. And so these are the methods that are being used to uh, to try and understand how many people you can fit in a stadium. So it's Pythagoras all over, uh, all over the sports world at the moment. And really using this kind of math, we're able to um, show the difference between how crowds move before and after social distancing, applying these bubbles, applying this, this idea of circles um, and, those, and those measurements. So how does uh, adding social distance compare with no social distance? Well, in the example I just showed there in the video, um, before you used to be able to get, so for that sort of corridor width, you might be able to get 288 people every uh, minute and that's dropped to something like 60 or 70 so a significant uh, drop in capacity so you will need more space to get the same number of people through because they're trying to space themselves apart. So what are people going to do so I know that the cinemas have now got to plan where people are allowed to sit rather than you just picking your own place which looks like the sort of thing you were talking about with Pythagoras and are people going to have to create more space uh, or are they just going to have to accept that they're going to have a quarter of the people come in? It's going to be a mixture of everything I think um, we'll see reduced capacity so fewer people being able to go into into certain places um, and also more space being found um, to, to house people in um, and there's going to be a lot of attention I think on group size so that's another interesting aspect because of course you only have to distance from people outside of your household and so selling tickets is now all about keeping whole groups apart. So looking at that, that Pythagorean measurement, it's not just between individuals, it would be for a bunch in a group. And of course, those shapes then get very interesting because it's not single circles anymore, they're, they're attached to each other. A lot of the concepts are the same, um, but of course, the way we measure it is now very different. Thanks to Eva for showing us the maths of social distancing. One of the big ideas there was circle packing. So how many circles can you fit 
in a space and that's something you can try out for yourself get some coins and see how many coins you can fit try different arrangements see what the most efficient packing of coins is in a certain space maybe you could try coins of different sizes and see what happens then I'll, I'll leave that with you something for you to try at home and for now I'll say stay safe and stay curious <laughs>